this is 300% whiskey. It's three bonded 100 proof whiskeys. Add that up. Yeah, that's simple math. 600 proof. We actually need to look this up. Let's get started. Welcome to another fine edition of Whiskey Christmas. Because when you bring home a new bottle of whiskey, it's like Christmas. Not denominationally, of course, and as long as you're over 21. Because you're not currently bandaging a baby. Or putting out a four alarm fire. Or putting down five alarm chili. Or judging a dog beauty pageant. Yeah, those guys are nuts. Or uh, officiating a toddler squid game. Or trying to memorize the nuclear codes. Or free climbing El Capitan in a thunderstorm. I'm Justin. And I'm Billy. And welcome to Whiskey Christmas. We have a great show for you today. Today we're going to be trying Jack Daniels Triple Mash. Jack. And Jack Daniels Single Barrel Cask Strength Store Pick. There's a lot of things to this one. I'm scared of Jack. You should be scared of this one. Yeah? Because it's so good. Okay, yeah. It's not the, the syrup I was drinking in college. Actually, no, this one was barreled on uh, on my birthday in 2021. Oh, well, happy birthday, Justin. So we're gonna take you through a little bit of what Tennessee whiskey is because it is a bit of a different process than bourbon or rye. They do something a little bit different that gives it a unique taste and flavor profile. They put it through a Brita filter. It's a Brita filter. Yeah. You can make Tennessee whiskey on your own. All you need is a Brita filter and the state of Tennessee. Yeah, all right. So obviously we're gonna taste these whiskeys, we're gonna compare them to each other, we're gonna compare them to Bullet. Um, we're gonna have a lot of fun doing that and having all sorts of opinions, I hope. Feelings, mostly from me. Then we're gonna see what Linda thought. I actually was able to have Linda try both of these whiskeys. We also have some bottles that have left us too soon that we'll show you if you care about that. I know you hate it. <laughs> I think you care about it quite a bit, it was what I was gonna say. And then we've got some viewer mail. Uh, some of these are quotes from actual people that have watched the show. Really? In this segment, we want to thank our loyal Patreon supporters. Don, your support means the world to me. You've been a rock through the years. She, she looks familiar. I didn't notice. Justin, is that your mom? Do you get your mom into this? Billy, we only have two Patreon supporters. What was I supposed to do, just Paul again? Paul Devlin, you are a national treasure. Where you walk, the air is sweeter in your wake. The ground is softer and more fertile. The sky bluer. Thank you for your continued financial support. I don't know who's gonna feel about that kiss. Whiskey Christmas is brought to you by First Patients Medical School. Have you ever left the doctor and thought, I could do that if I was a nerd. Now you don't have to be. Enroll at First Patients Medical School, and within two months, you'll be prescribing Sidenafil, piloting an ambulance, and putting Band-Aids on babies. First Patients Medical School. You'll be seeing your first patients in no time. Tennessee whiskey. What is it? Why does it matter? Who cares? Well, you might if you're watching at this point. I'd like to know. In many instances, Tennessee whiskey meets the same legal requirements as bourbon, considering the age, considering the mash bill, considering where it comes from, Tennessee, bourbon just has to be from America. But Tennessee, I think they do like to have that shelf at the liquor store that's just for Tennessee whiskey. And I think that that makes a big difference. Jack Daniels, which we're gonna try some offerings from, uh, sells the most worldwide as far as whiskey goes. When I'm traveling, I'm always confused when I see Jack Daniels because I do associate it with bad college ex experiences and a sweet stank that just sits around for days afterwards. My hope is that this particular tasting will change your opinion on Jack Daniels. I don't know if it will. And if it doesn't, okay. <laughs> it's fine too. <laughs> yeah. uh, so... Wait, I didn't, you just said something I didn't realize. So in most liquor stores, we're separating things by state? 
We're separating things by what category they fall into. So like bourbon will have a specific place mm. on a shelf. Rye will have a specific place on a shelf. Scotch will have a specific place on a shelf. Tennessee whiskey, because it doesn't necessarily fall into any of those other categories, ends up with its own specific spot on the shelf. And a big part of that is because Jack Daniels is so popular. Tennessee whiskey, surprisingly, must be produced in the state of Tennessee. Mm, surprise, surprise. And Tennessee whiskey goes through the Lincoln County process, which... The Brita process. The Brita process. We actually need to look this up. So the Lincoln County process, which is named after the county that Jack Daniels was originally distilled in, is a process where they put a lot of uh, charcoal chips into the barrel or they run it through an additional sort of charcoal filtering uh, before the whiskey actually goes into the barrel to age. So flavor profile wise, the Lincoln County process tends to give the whiskey a more tobacco or almond note. I would think because you're putting it through charcoal, you would get some burnt notes as well. Is this just like the cleanest charcoal? I don't know how charcoal actually works in the, this sort of process. I don't really know either. I think, uh, you know, they filter it a lot. But it, it's interesting. If you've ever had whiskey that has like little bits of char in it from the barrel, you don't taste any of that char. Like you can see right. it. It's visually there. You know you're consuming this like carbon into your body, right. but it's not on the flavor. And I think part of that's just because the the alcohol component is so powerful. Mm. You can't really talk about Jack Daniels now without mentioning the Uncle Nearest story. Uncle Nearest taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey, and his descendant is the master blender at Uncle Nearest Distillery. I didn't know the story. Yeah, but the cool thing is uh, it's black owned, uh, female owned, a uh, giant distillery that is blowing up right now. Making, when did they start? Making great whiskey, just a couple years ago. Damn. Um, so there's, you know, some really cool components of it, you know, just sort of bringing more diversity into whiskey making and involving more people. Yeah. The Whiskey Christmas Featured Whiskey is brought to you by First Patients Medical School. Ever wake up from surgery all sore and think to yourself, I could probably do a better job than that lame surgeon. Now's your chance. Sign up for your general surgery degree at First Patients Medical School and you'll be slicing, dicing, and price hiking in just six weeks. First Patients Medical School, you'll be seeing your first patients in no time. Jack Daniels Triple Mash comes in at 100 proof with an age of at least four years. It was distilled at the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee, and is a blend of three bonded whiskeys, a rye, a Tennessee whiskey, and an American single malt. You can find it on sale for between $40 and $50, and it's generally available. This Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey Single Barrel Store Pick comes in at a proof of 128.6 and has no age statement. It was also distilled in Lynchburg, Tennessee, and has a mash bill of 80% corn, 12% rye, and 8% malted barley. You can find it on sale for between $60 and $70, and it's somewhat available. Should we try these? Mm, probably. All right. This is clearly a blend of three different bonded whiskeys. Mm. It's at 100 proof. One of the interesting things about it is that this is in a 700 milliliter bottle. They only recently made it legal for you to sell whiskey in America in a 700 milliliter bottle. It had to be 750. Why go lower? It's just like like everything else in this country shrinking. Oh, these are nice. Oh, look at this. So nice. I mean, whiskey Christmas branded? tasting glasses. Where'd these come from, Justin? Non-denominational Santa. Hmm. Non-denominational Whiskey Santa. If these still taste good, maybe we'll start offering some of them to our non-denominational Whiskey Christians. Mm. I was waiting to smell it like right when you poured it because I just, I fear, I fear the Jack. Not too strong, it's pretty gentle. No, it is. Yeah, super corn. Very corn forward. <coughs> nice. That's just my pneumonia. <laughs> I'm getting a little like chocolate chocolateiness on the on the body, like right away. Mm. Well, I think that's the malted barley okay. situation. Like yeah. you you tend to get more of that when there's a malted barley component. Mm. 
The more you sip this, the the more pleasant it gets. I don't want to like it. <laughs> like every bone in my body tells me this is poison. Because it's Jack. Because it's Jack. Because you saw the label. You just see the label. I mean, it's not the black label, but that black label is just associated with a lot of bad times. Mm -hmm. and a lot of just like cleaning up a disgusting apartment that is covered in trash from a college party. Just cleaning up your own disgusting body. Yes, your own body and your apartment, and it all smells like Jack Daniels. Because somebody smashed it on the floor? Or spilled most of every drink. So I got more like traditional mm -hmm. Tennessee whiskey on the nose. And then once you get into that body though, that 20% of malted barley just takes over. And then for the finish, it's, it's a medium finish. It, it hangs out long enough for 100 proof whiskey that it makes sense. It's sticking with me. I'm still trying to like kind of like refine what is a good finish for me. It's pleasant, but it's like sticking around. Mm -hmm. uh, I associate that with rye often. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, Maybe that's because this is mostly rye. This is mostly rye. Yeah. This is three hundred percent whiskey. Mm. It's three bonded one hundred proof whiskeys. Add that up. Yeah, that's simple math. Six hundred proof. All right. So now that we've had the Jack Daniels triple mash, and I wasn't disgusted, and you weren't disgusted, no. Let's see what this does to you. Ooh. Do you think at some point we'll get a quieter table? No. Here we have our cask strength, single barrel, store pick. Yeah. Already the color is like very different. Yeah. Much darker on the barrel. Whoa. So this one comes in at a much higher proof. You're gonna get that on the nose, but I just get like overwhelming caramel and oak from this nose and corn. Heavy corn, heavy caramel, heavy oak. Just like a nice, rich depth of flavors. It smells sour to me, actually. I just really love this whiskey. Yeah, it's quite nice. <laughs> you wouldn't necessarily guess the proof of it, mm. drinking it, if you drink it slowly and sip it. Neither of these are as nearly as sweet as I thought they were gonna be. I okay. had it on the radar that I was like, gonna get a sugar wall. Yeah, like you, like we had just poured like a whole bucket of stevia. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I love this one because there's such depths to the body of it. And then the finish, it takes you on a little bit of a journey once you get to the finish as well. Tell me about your journey. We start out, there's corn on the horizon. We're walking down a field, there's dirt. Maybe the sun's about to set. I'm sniffing around. Through the nose. There's hints of ethanol. Gentle caramel wafting through the breeze. I fall into a pit of molasses. I see myself in this story on a train, like in a train car. Mm. You know, like I'm sitting there, I'm strumming like a shoebox guitar made out of rubber bands, sharing stories with my hobo pals. They kicked me off in Tennessee, and then I fell into like a puddle of molasses. I found myself surrounded by sweet corn. After the burn of the finish is dissipated, you're just left with this like very gentle corn mouthfeel. Your mouth feels like corn. I'm excited to try this against Bullet, because I know bourbon better than I do Tennessee, I think. Well, then let's bite it. But not like literally, like these are new. We need to get the other glasses. Right. So now we have our special cups. Got our special cups, uh, which could be yours today for a kind donation of... We'll figure that out. We'll figure it out later. Just, just start donating money, and mm -hmm. once you hit the threshold, We'll send you a message. Yeah, you'll know when you hit it. Wow, it smells like apple juice. That was weird. That's just shocking to have something else so sweet. Like this is more of like a syrupy sweetness. And I know we said that about the Jack, but we were wrong. No, well, I mean, I kind of wish we had a black bottle. I feel like Bullet is missing out on like a, like a Silver Bullet branding. They could like co-brand with Coors Light and just like slaughter werewolves. Like in the old times. Mm. How we used to slaughter werewolves. Wow. 
This one smells wild now. My COVID went away, thankfully. It just tastes like a pile of sugar <clears throat> at this point. Yeah, and it's just like, it smells so light. Everything about it's light. It tastes light. Yeah. Like an... I'm getting more like maple syrup out of the... Out of the body? Well, out of the... Oh, you're... you're, the, you're yeah. the Jack barrel strength. Like, yeah. this is like a lot of maple syrup to me versus like corn syrup, which is what's going on in the bullet. I'd put this on pancakes. Mm. You know what? I don't disagree. Like if you were having like drunk pancakes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. soak it in. If I was doing like a breakfast for dinner mm -hmm. thing, <laughs> yeah, maybe not in the morning, no. unless you stayed up all night. Yeah, if you're still up and capable of drinking cask strength whiskey and making pancakes and making pancakes, then why not? I mean, you're clearly a warrior. <laughs> The verdict is brought to you by First Patients Medical School. Have you ever woken up from a nap and thought, I'm great at this sleep thing. I should be an anesthesiologist. Now you can be. Just take the three-day anesthesiology course at First Patients Medical School and get those burn victims to bed. First Patients Medical School. You'll be seeing your first patients in no time. How would you rank these? Mm. And you can use the, the terminology of mixer, sipper, saver. Right. I would say these are, this is definitely a sipper for me. 100%. It's Agreed. Hard. How can you not? Um, this, it's pleasant, just like we expected. But I don't think it would be a good mixer. There's nothing like super popping out of it. I'd sip the fuck out of it, but it's nothing compared to this for me. Agree. It is what it is, but this is definitely my uh, one, two, three. I agree. I This to me is very much a sipper. Uh, I was so excited when I tasted this bottle. Yeah. Um, it's so good. This one is a sipper. After we had this, this like, you know, went down a tier. Yeah. It's hard. But they're also very different price points. This is around $70. This is around $40. It's pretty good, 70 bucks. It's a standout whiskey. Yeah. For sure. This bottle was donated by Jared Poirier, who was a big supporter of the show. Oh, thank you, Jared. Yeah. My brother. Mm, makes sense. Which does make sense. Yeah. The, the, Same last name. Same last name. You have the whole family involved now. When's Papa For Poirier getting involved? Oh, we should get him involved. So now you know what we think, but what does Linda think? Yeah. Does she like these? Probably not. Well, first we should tell you who this episode's Linda is. This episode's Linda is Christina. Who... Let me guess, it's another member of your family. I think she doesn't typically like whiskey, but she also doesn't back down from a challenge. Mm. So uh, we actually had her try both of these. Oh, nice. And I know how she felt about them, but how do you think she's going to feel about them? If she didn't like them or she's lying? We'll find out. Hi, I'm Christina. I'm this episode's Linda, and I'm trying Jack Daniel's Triple Mash. Oh, okay. A little strong. It's burning my intestines. Um, but overall, tolerable. Hey, everyone. Trying Jack Daniel's Barrel Strength. Something high proof, not sure what else. <gasps> wow. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Smells better than it tastes, but I can't try it again. That's it for this episode's Linda. To be transparent, I was there when I filmed her tasting these and it didn't surprise me all that much. I was completely surprised. Hmm. Brutal honesty. Mm. How beautiful. You know, that's just who she is. Brutally honest. About her intestines being on fire. And about if she is willing to taste something again or not. Yeah, yeah. I don't want this in my body anymore. Get it away from me. Thanks, Christina. Yeah. Thanks for being a real team player. Whiskey Christmas in Memoriam is brought to you by 
First Patients Medical School. Have you ever gone to a funeral and thought, mm. it's kind of cool hanging out with this dead body? Now you can do that all the time and get paid to chop them up. Just take our 15-minute online coroner certificate program and you'll be covered in corpses, buried in bodies, and drowning in dead by this time next week. First Patients Medical School. You'll be seeing your first patients in no time. Here's to a few bottles that have left us too soon. If you would like to be featured, just post to Instagram and tag us. And we'll share your bottles that you drank all of. Yeah, and they're dead now. Yeah. Hopefully recycled. I hope so. If you have recycling in your local area. You should. You should. We don't hear. We, oh yeah, we don't. So welcome to our viewer mail section. This is where we share reactions that we've gotten to the show, comments that we've gotten, and feedback from people that love or really love us. I didn't realize I was being quoted in the other episode. When did I say that? Justin's friend, Evan. Evan Williams? Uh, Evan Brock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked to him shortly after he was featured in an episode. And there's some real information in there, but also normal jokes. And then there's just some really weird jokes, which I guess makes sense because that's just kind of who Justin is. He thought it was off the record, but journalistic integrity isn't in my vocabulary. You're more of a leaker type. I'm like the TMZ of Justin's close friends. I tell myself everything. <laughs> you have a whiskey channel. Does it get a lot of views? This is from the bartender at the Pine Bar in Boston. As for the views, take a look for yourself. They're right here. Is that where they are? If you watch this a few more times, we might get to drink for free at the Pine Bar. Yeah, that's the goal, right? I don't know why I'm condoning this. Uh, Maddie, your wife. She, I think she said that while we were at the bar. Yeah, it's wasn't talking about the show. No, no. she was... It must have been something. Else. This is a good thing. Yeah. This helps a lot of people. Yeah. Including Brian from Time and Materials Beer, who said, I've seen my sales numbers increase by several cans. You're welcome, Brian. Yeah. I'm glad that your investment is paying off. I'd love to get those ROI numbers for our sales pitch deck. Yeah. Do you know that he's doing some new beers that he's going to age in former rye casks and bourbon casks? That sounds a lot more relevant. Yeah, that'll be good for us. Legit, I can get you a doctorate for 60 bucks. First Patients Medical School, Dean of Admissions, Dr. Alabaster, MD, PhD, MS, MSRP. Might get you a job. We also have a hot take from Fresh. Sam. It just came in. He said, uh, what's your favorite whiskey under $25? As far as my favorite whiskey under $25, I'd say my favorite rye is probably Rittenhouse, Bottom Bond, and then my favorite bourbon is probably the Evan Williams, Bottom Bond. And then my favorite scotch that I've seen for under $25 is there's a Dewar's that they secondarily age in a Mizanara cask that I've seen for that price, which is very solid. What's Mizanara? It's Japanese oak. Oh, oh, cool. Well, that's our show. Until next time, wishing you a merry non-denominational whiskey Christmas. And an incredible Isle Ides of March. Like and subscribe, or don't. I'm not your boss. <laughs> that's how you prepare. You just get all the gases out of your body. Yeah. In post, you can add a fart to that, too. <laughs> Elliot, like, sneezed into one eye, and then I was, like, wiping that eye off, and he, like, sneezed into the other eye. Yeah, to give you full coverage. I'll make sure to cough in your mouth during this. He's done that several times today. I'm not getting it. Did I just get COVID during this episode? 
Did you test before? Red leather, yellow leather. Just sucking on a cob. I don't know if I can handle that one. <laughs> a failing clan. Why do I always bring the clan into everything? <laughs> I was thinking Klingons. I had Klingons on the mind. About her intestines being on fire, about not wanting to. There's an animal in the building. I can EQ that sound out. Rupa, stop whining. <laughs> Rupa, lay down. Go lay down, baby. Let's go, baby. Can you lay down, please? All the way down. Your tongue's getting tied in knots. I'll, Ides of March. Oh no. Dr. Alabastar. Did I say that right? Do this whole boil again. Yes, I know. <laughs>